Most credit the Wright brothers with the first successful flight in the winter of 1903. American history textbooks lay this out quite plainly. But by that time, Brazilian native Alberto Santos Dumont had already undertaken several successful voyages in more than half a dozen lighter than air vessels of his own creation, famously circling the Eiffel Tower with the airship number 5 on July 13, 1901. Santos Dumont was a true Renaissance man, and Parisian society held him in high esteem, quickly building a fan base and network of celebrities and notable urban bourgeoisie. In 1904, as the story goes, Santos Dumont consulted his close confidant and fashion house heir, Louis Cartier, to craft a signature wristwatch purpose-built for flying. Cartier responded in expert fashion, with a wristwatch featuring a prominent square dial, bold Roman numeral hour markers, and a small set of breguet hands all secured to the wrist with a Horween leather strap. This one-of-a-kind creation cemented both Cartier and Santos Dumont as horological icons, and it marked the beginning of a long line of aviation-inspired watchmaking. Zenith and Louis Blériot, World War II's Fliegers, a post-war Breitling Renaissance, the Rolex Master GMT, Speedmaster 70s Space Saga. Of course, we could go on and on, but instead, let's dive right in. In this guide, we've scoured the skies and rounded up nine of our favorite pilot watches that are built upon the legacy of amazing aviation horology. In the mid-1920s, German-based Loco began its operation. Although they couldn't have predicted the fast approaching Second World War, they certainly capitalized and became a central figure supplying wristwatches for the pilots of the German Luftwaffe. Lacco was only one of five watchmakers to supply the timepieces to the German Air Force, right alongside Stova, IWC, Alange & Zone, and Wempe. The only specific style created for the German Air Force you need to know is the Flieger style. Flieger is simply German for pilot, and there were two versions created, the Type A and the Type B. Both were purposely made extremely large, with minimal dial elements to maximize readability. The Type A was even less adorned than the Type B, that sees a few more tools and details on the dial. The Loco Augsburg 42 is the former of the two, a Type A Flieger, and it's one of the most affordable and quintessential pilot watches still produced today. And the best part? You can find it for under $500. Loco manufactures two different diameters, a 39mm and a 42. This particular model is the latter, and it sports a 50mm lug to lug and an 11.75mm thickness. On our wearer's wrist, just a touch under 8 inches, it certainly maintains its presence, but it's not what we'd consider oversized like the IWC Big Pilot. For someone with a larger wrist dimension, you'll definitely want to consider the 42 over the 39 if you align with the traditional Flieger aesthetic. Typically one of the easiest ways you can spot a Flieger style pilot watch from say its close relative the field watch that also uses a minimalist technical style dial is the crown. When these guys were in the air during the war, pilots wore gloves and they couldn't afford to take them off to make quick adjustments for timing. So Loco and other manufacturers built in what we now call an onion style crown. Large, ornamented, conical crowns that use channels for grip with similarities to the shape of an onion. The unit on the Augsburg 42 is a bit more angular than the rounded vintage ones of yesteryear, but that's essentially the gist. They've rolled over and give the very simplistic cases and dials some extra ornamentation. A lesser degree of water resistance will also be another telltale indication between a pilot watch and a field watch. The Augsburg 42 only maintains 50 meters, more than enough for anyone, but low on the scale by comparison. The dial presentation is extremely straightforward, with Arabic numerals applied with bright C3 grade superluminova, as are the indices and the inverted high noon triangle marker, taking the place of the 12. Loco uses the Loco S2 based on the Miyota 82S0, but you also get the option of upgrading to the Loco 31 for an extra $70. The standard S2 isn't really the best part about this watch. It certainly won't compete with Swiss movements, and there's even a bit of controversy using a fairly off-the-shelf Miyota movement in a watch that retails for $410. But like a quartz variant, it's easily serviceable and it won't let you down for everyday wear, with a power reserve of about 42 hours and decent accuracy. Another subtle but identifiable trademark of a Flieger style pilot watch is the band. Notice the twin rivets near the case. When pilots used to wear the oversized watches over their jackets, the once rough rivets would actually catch and bind to the fabric or the leather to prevent the watch from losing its rotational position on the wrist. Now they're just an aesthetic consideration but it's a very iconic design and adds unmistakable charm. We all know Hamilton maintains extraordinary military heritage with the Hamilton khaki field. The reissue has done exceedingly well for the brand and is considered one of the most iconic Swiss swatches in production today. 
Lesser known but equally relevant, in our opinion, is the Hamilton Khaki Aviation Pilot Pioneer Mechanical. Based on the tonneau-shaped 6BB RAF pilot watch Hamilton issued to the British Royal Air Force between 1973 and 1976. The original design is just barely pre-Swatch era, and they were made in the US before the operation moved offshore to Switzerland. This faithful resurrection is yet another home run for Hamilton and fans of military-inspired watches. It has heaps of character with its brushed barrel-shaped case, railroad-style dial track, and beautiful textured background. If you already thought the Hamilton khaki field was small at 38mm, you're in for a surprise with the Pilot Pioneer Mechanical. The case runs quite small at 36mm in diameter, and it's up 1mm from the original 35 with a short 42mm lug to lug and a stout 9.95mm height. For those who are happily riding the vintage nostalgia train, the Pilot Pioneer will continue your joyride. The case shape is definitely tonneau, there's no denying that, but its side profile is chunky and squared off. The lugs don't taper and there's not a ton of curve. Pair that with the short lug to lug and the barrel silhouette and it should wear just a touch larger than its diameter specification would suggest. Speaking of side profiles, a good degree of the thickness comes from the box mineral crystal take a look. It does a good degree of heavy lifting in terms of the overall height. Under the mineral glass, the dial is familiar, like the khaki field with a railroad seconds track, straightforward applied Arabic numerals, and a set of arrow-shaped hands inlaid with superluminova that matches the indices. Unfortunately, just like our minor gripe about the Hamilton khaki field, the numerals are still devoid of any luminescent properties. Really unfortunate for a tool watch homage. Even though most folks aren't going to lean on this for such purposes, the fact that the originals were hard-wearing military tools and Hamilton let this attribute out is slightly disappointing. The mechanical H50 caliber keeps the pilot pioneer moving, sticking to what they know. The same unit found in the Hamilton khaki field mechanical that supplies 80 hours of power reserve and impressive accuracy for a sub $1,000 price point. I don't think anybody can argue with this, and we certainly won't. Note that the Pilot Pioneer does use an 18mm NATO, so for those who already own the khaki field and have a bunch of standard 20mm units, well, you're out of luck. It's about time. We were stoked when this hit the market and we're pretty damn sure that you will be too. Back in 1986, the US military, or Kelly Air Force Base more specifically, reached out to Marathon, who had been a government supplier of no-spec wristwatches since 1941, with a prompt. They needed a dedicated pilot watch with the same hardwearing specifications as their infamous GSAR and field watch lines. Marathon heeded the call by producing the Navigator, now one of Marathon's most popular lines. The latest evolution carries over the asymmetrical barrel case beefed up with a full 316L marine grade stainless steel build. Just revived this year, the Marathon Navigator is back with the same steel DNA as the original, and it comes packed with modern features. First, we have to give all the love to the case. I think it's safe to say that this is the navigator everybody's been waiting for. A screw down crown with 100 meters of water resistance up from 50, a steel 120 click bi-directional timing bezel, drilled lugs, we can go on and on, but the real winner here is the metallic construction. At 41 millimeters in diameter with an 11 millimeter thickness, the new steel navigator has used this asymmetrical design since its inception. The large right side now housing a screw down crown with a bolstered 100 meters of water resistance. On top, Marathon now adds a steel bezel with an aluminum bezel insert that uses 120 clicks, up from the 6C unidirectional clicks we received with the resin variants up until this release. On the 180, the Navigator uses a redesigned case pack that features a convenient battery housing for quick swaps, as it uses a heavy drive precision drive quartz, specifically the EDA F06.412 with a documented accuracy of plus to minus 10 seconds per year. Quartz movements get a lot of hate. But for precision instruments and accuracy dollar for dollar, you're not going to get any better than a Swiss Quartz movement. Not a lot of changes to the steel navigator's dial under the sapphire. If you compare the 41mm resin navigator date with the steel navigator side by side, you'll see the same red tip seconds hand, the lollipop counterbalance, the tritium gas tube indices and hands for loom, and the offset 4 o'clock unframed date window. Conveniently impacted with a bit of retro flair, the steel navigator uses drill lugs for attaching the 20mm nylon def stand slip through strap. It comes outfitted with a matching set of stainless steel buckle hardware, and it's about as rugged as they come. Moving on. Even though Christopher Ward doesn't maintain the same extensive wartime heritage as our other Swiss space picks, they are probably one of the most heralded modern suppliers of watches approved by the branches of the British military. The C65 Cranwell Series 2 is the second generation Cranwell, appropriately named after the RAF station in Lincolnshire, England. Christopher Ward is one of the only Swiss watchmakers to have a dedicated military line with app naming conventions. For example, the Sandhurst Field Watch in honor of the Royal Military Academy, the Lindstone after the Commando Training Center, the Colchester honoring an English military base dating back to the Romans, and the Dartmouth for the Royal Navy. 
Each of those watches, like the C65 Cranwell series, has been officially tested and approved by the branch it was created for. Let's take a look at some specs. The smaller Gen 2 38mm stainless steel case is nearly fully brushed, with strips of high polish layered between to create what Christopher Ward calls a light catcher system. Take a look at the side profile and you can see it in action. On the back side, Christopher Ward builds in a beautifully engraved screw down case back with the Royal Air Force heraldic badge and a few inscriptions about the Cranwell's technical specs. Under the glass box sapphire crystal, the pilot watch is certainly characteristic, with a high noon inverted triangular marker at the 12, a Flieger-esque inner circle applied with Arabic numerals just inside the printed minute track, and two different styles of hands, all inlaid and set with beautifully bright blue grade X1 Super Luminola. We love that the numerals are set with loom. It gives the watch far more utility than say the Hamilton Khaki Aviation Pilot Pioneer. As good looking as it is, that watch definitely wouldn't stand up to any real use scenarios. The contrast between the two different shades of loom also gives the Cranwell some vintage cues, while avoiding an overly safe ride on the nostalgia train. And speaking of, the large retro screw down crown at the 3 o'clock, with an attractive red aluminum ring and Christopher Ward's embossed Twin Flags logo, provides 100 meters of reliable water resistance. As its engine, Christopher Ward employs the trusty COSC certified Salita SW200 caliber, with a 38 hour power reserve and a 4 hertz beat rate, with 26 joules. Along with everything else, crafted with meticulous attention to detail, the beautifully machined bracelet with screw posts and a double button push clasp featuring a quick adjustment system, make the C65 Cranwell Series 2 a serious contender for one of the best pilot watches at the $1,000 price tier. Zinn has racked up an impressive roster of watches, and while not all Zinn watches are pilot's watches, all Zinn watches were inspired first by aviation. The Zinn 104 ASTSA stands as one of Zinn's most popular pilot watches to date around the $2,000 price point. Zinn can definitively say they are the only notable watchmaker founded by an actual World War II pilot himself, in the German Luftwaffe no less. Helmut Zinn was a true renaissance man, and he had an extensive entrepreneurial spirit prior to the war. But when it broke out, he began to train young pilots and later began to fly missions himself for the Axis forces. He channeled his first-hand experience behind the yoke to build Zinn from the ground up, inspired by the cockpit dials of his fighter planes, and he employed unconventional but hard-wearing materials like submarine steel to craft watches that ushered the traditional Flieger into the postmodern era. If you're doing your research, you'll have a hard time finding many complaints about the 104, and if you've come looking for any here, well, you're out of luck. No pilot watch is perfect, but for the price, the Zinn 104 is certainly contender. The stainless steel case is 41 millimeters in diameter, with a lug to lug of 46.5 and a thickness of 11.9. Looking for a pilot watch as someone with a small wrist dimension isn't easy, but the 104 could be the ticket. The fully blacked out bezel, in addition to the blacked out dial background, actually make the 104 wear a bit smaller than the 41 millimeter dimension would have you believe on paper. Combined with a stout 46.5mm lug to lug, and we're pretty confident someone with a 7 inch wrist or less could rock the 104 without any issues. Plus, it's pretty thin, comparatively to others on this list. Although the 104 isn't your typical Flieger, the dial does share some DNA. Although ours does sport them, Zinn makes a 104 without any numerals, with a tightly packed track of hour, minute, and even quarter minute indices along the periphery, with a day date at the 3 o'clock, and some very attractive Zinn script below the 12 and above the 6. Interestingly enough, rotating bezels are not super common for a pilot watch. Don't ask us why. You'd think they'd be super helpful for short timing applications, but they're surprisingly few and far between. If you like the action of a timing bezel for daily wear, plus the look of a pilot watch, the 104 is the perfect choice, as would be something from Damasco who integrates rotating bezels for their pilot watches, or we'd even recommend taking a look at Glycine with budget-friendly picks sub $500. It's a little strange that Zinn doesn't disclose the official caliber on the site, but under the hood, the 104 uses a trusty self-winding mechanical Salita SW220-1. Perhaps there's a little shame around not using an in-house or at the very least modified off-the-shelf movement, but for the money, this is a grade A unit and it won't give you any problems. In line with their entire catalog, Zinn ships the 104 with your choice of strap or bracelet. The H-Link is the definitive Zinn King, but if you're looking for something more casual, a black leather strap would be our next recommendation. If you consider the Cartier Santos as the pilot watch genesis, historically speaking, then the squared off Bell & Ross BR03-92 is true to form. In fact, they've built their references in the form of miniature squared off mid-century aviation dial instruments, much like the nature of Zinn's operation in Germany, and that's just how Bell & Ross refers to them, as instruments. We think French-based Bell & Ross doesn't get the love and attention it deserves, especially in the pilot watch space, but the BR03-92 is one of the most capable and cutting-edge pilot watches currently in production for professionals, 
who are looking for a real tool, not just a piece of eye candy. The black matte ceramic case has significant R&D behind its construction. Ceramic is the current industry standard in aerospace and aeronautical fabrication, as it maintains outstanding thermal properties, resistance to high temperatures, exposure to acid and corrosion, and it's fully biocompatible. In the same manner as the Zenith Pilot Automatic, which is at the end of this guide, ceramic makes the case extremely scratch resistant. So even if you do get a few, you'll have a hard time seeing them unless you're extremely close to the case, and it'll look great for a long time. Uniquely, it should come as no surprise that the 42mm diameter matches the 42mm lug to lug as a square. Since the watch and others like it in Bell and Ross's catalog are plucked straight out of a cockpit, the oversized wearing experience is, well, all part of the experience. They should wear a bit large, as that's how they were designed. That being said, we think they look best on a wrist size no smaller than 7 and a quarter inches, so keep that in mind. Black aircraft-like flatheads or pseudo-rivets on each corner go a long way to add to its simultaneously rugged and stealthy nature. It's often hard to craft a watch with both simplicity and a feeling of toughness. Zinn does this so well, and so does Bell & Ross. Along with a push-pull ampersand branded crown, the case is extremely singular. In fact, we think a huge part of the industrial appeal is that Bell & Ross designed these as instruments first and foremost. The high contrast between the totally blacked out case and dial and the bright white applied Arabic numerals at the cardinal hour markers along with the minute track and super luminova dipped handset provide one of the most legible viewing experiences we've ever witnessed. They've also built in some really unique dial architecture like the offset circular date window between the 4 o'clock and the 5 o'clock hour markers. Inside, the French watchmaker employs the BR Caliber 302 self winding mechanical movement, or to put it plainly, a Salita SW300-1 with enough modifications to qualify as their own. The BR03-92 isn't necessarily branded as a diver, but along with 100 meters of water resistance, securing the instrument to your wrist is a very comfortable 24 mm branded rubber strap that looks the part, and it tapers significantly toward the black PVD coated buckle hardware. So although it was designed for the sky, you could certainly consider leaving this on for any moderate dives despite the push-pull crown. Just be careful. The first purpose-built IWC Mark series was the Mark 11, and it was issued specifically for the British Royal Air Force starting in the late 1940s, circa 1948. But we also said IWC were one of five pioneering Flieger-style manufacturers who developed watches for the German Luftwaffe. So they supplied watches to both sides during the war? Well, yes and no. See, IWC was considered a neutral party during the war, so why did they just start issuing watches in 1945? Wasn't the war mostly over by then? Yes, but Switzerland borders Germany to the north, Austria to the east, and Axis occupied Italy and France to the south and west. This largely prevented them from exporting any watches to the Allied forces for quite some time. Plus, they really only supplied the German forces with a relatively small number of Fliegers in the early years of the war, with approximately a thousand units. Only after the high points of the war, for logistical reasons, IWC finally was able to get the Mark 11 in the hands of the British. The spark ignited and to this day we've seen iteration after iteration of the Mark series pilot watch. The Mark 20 is only the latest in a long line of pilot watches and it's THE pilot watch for the one in search of an entry level luxury pilot watch with heaps of history and stunning looks. The Mark series represents one of two prominent IWC lines, the second being the Big Pilot series, but represents the more wearable of the two as the Big Pilots, as the name suggests, boast case sizes plus or minus 45mm or more, whereas the Mark 20 clocks in at a far more modest 40mm in diameter. As the lug to lug sits at 49mm and its thickness at just 10.4, the Mark 20 may be the answer to anyone with a smaller wrist dimension who's looking for a quintessential modern Flieger, but has a hard time due to the oversized case sizes. Although the stainless steel case is notably brushed and beautifully finished, the show-stopping radiant blue sunburst dial under the flat sapphire serves as a high contrast backdrop for the slightly domed Arabic numerals, traditional pilot watch indices like the high noon inverted triangle and rhodium plated hands, all applied or inset with plenty of loom. But the dial wouldn't be as impactful as it is without an incredible piece of highly anti-reflective sapphire crystal. It's hands down one of the best we've ever seen on any watch, let alone one around $5,000. It's clear IWC has focused their effort on infusing modern tastes with the ethos of the traditional pilot watch form, and they pull off this union so well. The Mark 20 in our opinion is the perfect go anywhere do anything pilot watch, as it's the one that's the most versatile. Classy enough to be dressed up, but traditional enough for everyday wear with the right strap pairing. Inside, the Mark 20 keeps time by the way of the IWC manufactured 32111 caliber. Around $5,000 you can't argue with 120 hours of power reserve or a 4Hz beat rate. It checks all the boxes, accuracy, performance, and the looks to back it up. 
Also, IWC provides a premium 20mm leather strap by default, matched to the dial color of your choice, in this case black or blue. Secured and easily swappable via IWC's Easy Exchange system to eliminate any need for extraneous tools. If you view the IWC's Mark 20 as a distillation or reduction to only the purest pilot watch elements, the Aorus Pro Pilot Altimeter is the converse, a true feat of purpose-made utilitarian maximalism, adding to their signature aviation-inspired line, the Pro Pilot. First things first, the altimeter is 47 millimeters in diameter, and this will drastically reduce the pool of people who consider it seriously. So why did we include to highlight this over the well-loved Pro Pilot Big Crown series? For starters, Oris dropped this creation at this year's Watches and Wonders, and it's the world's only watch to combine a mechanical altimeter with an automatic mechanical movement. So instead of highlighting the Big Crown series, which is another Oris staple, and one we can agree is already well-loved, we wanted to show that the pilot watch form isn't all throwbacks or reissues, but are being reinvented in the present. Starting with the case, like we stated, it has massive presence. At 47mm with a 54mm lug to lug and a 17mm thickness, it makes no concessions for those with a small wrist size. But the Aorus catalog is so unique and diverse that we're sure you'd find another suitable pilot watch for your specific wrist size, even within the Pro Pilot line like the Excalibur for example. The case is 3D printed carbon fiber, so the size to weight ratio here is unique in that a 47mm watch with a metallic case material would feel substantial. Quite the opposite with the Pro Pilot Altimeter, at just 98 grams or 3.45 ounces on the wrist. On the right hand side, two screw down crowns with 100 meters of water resistance are located at the 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock position to adjust your time and altitude respectively. To operate, use the crown to position your starting altitude or your baseline in red, and then the yellow indicator will move freely according to your ascension up to 19,000 feet or about 6,000 meters. Although the dial does look complex on the surface with a ton of depth, it's actually very simple to read. Let's walk you through it. On the outside, there's three concentric altitude readouts starting from the center which spiral outward. Then the inner circle is very recognizable in the context of the Pro Pilot line, almost a beat for beat recreation of the Big Crown Pro Pilot Big Date, down to the typography of the Arabic numerals and the shape and color of the white framed hands themselves. Inside, Aorus keeps the altimeter running via the Aorus 793, and as we mentioned, it's the only caliber currently in production that integrates a mechanical altimeter with an automatic movement. Plus, you get 56 hours of power reserve and a 4Hz beat rate for unwavering accuracy. Lastly, Oris calls this textile strap black, but it's definitely more of an OD green if anything against the rich black of the carbon fiber case. In any regard, it's rugged and it comes with a titanium clasp assembly to keep it in line with the lightweight nature of the main case. And keep in mind if you're considering a strap swap, the Pro Pilot Altimeter does use a wide 23mm lug width. To close out our top 10 list of excellent pilot watches is our most expensive piece at $9,600, but it certainly soars above the competition in a few key ways and precisely captures the essence of Zenith's aviation history while infusing modern sensibilities. The Zenith Pilot Automatic pays homage to the legendary French pilot Louis Blériot and Zenith's own celestial origin story, making it a must-have watch for aviation enthusiasts and watch collectors alike. The Zenith Pilot Automatic is incredibly simple, as you can see, but it's crafted with meticulous attention to detail, embracing simplicity in its design by showcasing bold Arabic numerals set against a clean and minimalistic group dial. Zenith, having trademarked the word pilot all the way back in 1888, proudly displays this reference on the dial above the 6, a symbol of the brand's heritage and prowess with the pilot watch category. The watch's case options are an impressive feat. While the brushed stainless steel version exudes timeless elegance in line with the Nautilus, it's the stealthy black ceramic variant that truly steals the spotlight. But Zenith employed not just a few inset ceramic elements, rather the entire outer case is constructed from ceramic, lending exceptional scratch resistance and a lightweight feel on the wrist. Proportionally, the case is suitable for just about anyone, measuring 40mm in diameter with a 49.6mm lug to lug and a median 12.85mm thickness. The inclusion of a sleek, onion style push pull crown is definitely modernized, but still built with enough leftover character reminiscent of the classic Flieger style. Underneath a very anti reflective sapphire crystal, the pilot automatic style carries a fascinating aspect that challenges the Mandela effect phenomenon. Think of an iconic pilot watch. This may bring to mind the IWC Mark series, a Flieger from Stova, Laco, or even Vempe, a Breitling Navitai Macrono, or perhaps even the modern Pro Pilot lineup from Oris. Yet, Zenith is the only manufacturer to proudly display the sole word pilot on the dial, thanks to a trademark dating back to 1888. Zenith's founder, Georges Favergeco, had the foresight to secure this hyper accurate naming convention almost 150 years ago. And safe to say, it's still paying off for Zenith to this day. 
The Pilot Automatic's clean and minimalist dial text distinguishes this Pilot watch from its contemporaries and adds to the historical allure of a markedly modern watch that retails for almost $10,000. Underneath the Sapphire Exhibition case back lies Zenith's self-winding caliber El Primero 3620 movement. With an impressive beat rate of 36,000 vibrations per hour and a generous power reserve of 60 hours, this caliber sets the Pilot Automatic in a tier of its own by offering specifications largely unmatched to this price tier. While the absence of a metal bracelet, or ceramic in this case, may disappoint some, especially considering the MSRP and the presence of other ceramic bracelets in Zenith's lineup, the Pilot Automatic ships with a sporty yet sophisticated Cordura leather hybrid strap that will hold up great to abrasion and like the main ceramic case, should stay in excellent standing over time. That's it for us, but before we go we want to make mention that there are obviously many other excellent Pilot watches. These are but a few of the dozens of notable references, so as always, we'd love to get the conversation started. Let us know down below which Pilot watches you think take the top spot.